Christ came to set us free from the bondage of sin. Especially the sin of pride, which is at the root of all sin. And is at the root of such foolish mentalities. Sin is freedom. Heresy is expression of my intellectual freedom. There's nothing further from the truth. Sin is bondage. Sin is bondage. We have to have that burned into our heads. We have to have it imprinted deeply in our hearts if we wish to get to heaven. If we wish to live a virtuous life, sin is bondage. It's not freedom. Sin is bondage, not freedom. Our Lord came to free us from this bondage of sin. He will not force us, though. He won't force us to be free. Think of that. He respects our freedom so much that he will allow us to remain bond in bondage even though he has all the power, his almighty power at his disposal to free us. He offers it over and over and over again to us each and every day. But when we choose sin, even the smallest sin, we're choosing bondage. Sin is bondage, not freedom. Sin is bondage, not freedom. Our Lord told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Our Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth will set you free. I have come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. This is the life of sanctifying grace. Truth and life is what our Lord came to show us and to give us. And he wants us to have it so badly that he died to give it to us. St. Thomas Aquinas, when reflecting on the great generosity of God to give us truth and life, tells us it would appear as if man were the God of God. For it would seem that the happiness of God depended upon the salvation of men. And this because look at the lengths that God takes, that he goes to, to save us. And we have to also remember, he was under no obligation to do so. It would have been no injustice on the part of God to leave us alone after original sin. He could have said, you want to be like God? Fine. Have it your way. There would have been no injustice on God's part. Yet the great mercy of God is seen in that third chapter of Genesis, immediately after the fall, that God wants the friendship of man. He wants them to live with him in heaven. He wants them to be enlightened by that truth, to be enlivened by that supernatural life of grace. For what do we read immediately after Adam and Eve fall? We read that God went looking for man. He was in search of him. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? God knew where he was, but he sought him anyway to draw Adam to himself so that he would have an opportunity to ask for forgiveness. But what did he do? He played the blame game. What's well, that woman you gave me? Eve, the same thing. What's well, that serpent? But even before Almighty God, again, another manifestation of his great mercy and desire to save us 
even before he lays out the punishments for this horrendous sin against Almighty God, he promises a Savior. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and hers. She will crush your head, O Satan, and you will lie in wait for her heel. God goes to such lengths to give us truth and life. We need to reflect as we begin to prepare, think about New Year's resolutions. How much do I value in my everyday life truth and the life of sanctifying grace? Is that what my life revolves around? Because that's what the life of Christ revolved around. Truth and life truth and life, to give it to us, to witness to it, even to the laying down of his life. If we wish to get through these times, we have to live for truth and supernatural life. Everything else is subservient to that. Bishop Athanasius Schneider his interview book, Christus Vinci, has a line, he's talking to priests, but it applies to each one of us. He said, every priest needs to live for two things, and two things only, the truth and supernatural life. He must be willing to lose everything everything for those two things, the truth and supernatural life. He must be willing to lose his parish, his ecclesiastical career, his faculties, everything for these two things, the truth and supernatural life. We must live for truth and supernatural life. Everything else is subservient to it. If we wish to be free, we must live for the truth and supernatural life. Make this your New Year's resolution and begin it today. And then, and only then, by living for the truth and supernatural life, will we experience the freedom that our Lord gives and promises to each and every one who follows him with their whole heart, their whole mind, and their whole soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.